many reads as follows. Pain in the leg yield. There is a woman who has testified about the goodness of God in her life. Two people on behalf of the reverse ministry went to the her house doing evangelism and shared Pastor Robert's phone number with her. She called the man of God asking for prayer for her injured leg. The leg got injured in 2000 and grew worse in 2007. She used to take pills in order to ease the pain, but the pills were no longer effective these days. Sometimes she would use a walking aid in order to move around, Pastor Robert prayed for her over the phone, and the healing power of Jesus Christ touched her. She testified that the pain is no longer there. She can walk without using any aid. Glory to God in Jesus' name. Amen. Our announcements are as follows. Every morning at 6 a.m. from Monday to Friday, we have our morning prayer, which is at 7 a.m. on Saturdays and Sundays. Our midday service starts at 5 to 12. And then our evening service starts at half past 6 every night. Our midnight prayer starts at 5 to 12 every night. And we also have our weekly prayer and fasting, which is on Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. The details of the fasting are shared on our different WhatsApp groups. And to those who want to partake in the blessings of the Lord through tithe and offerings, the banking details are shared on our different WhatsApp groups, on Messenger, as well as on our different Facebook platforms. Amen. Amen. Tonight, we will get the word of God from the book of Revelation, chapter 1, starting from verse 9. It reads as follows. I, John, your brother and companion in the suffering and kingdom and patient endurance that are ours in Jesus, was on the island of Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. On the last day, I was in the spirit and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet. I turned around to see the voice that was speaking to me. And when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And among the lampstands was someone like a son of man, dressed in a robe, reaching down to his feet and with golden sash around his chest. The hair on his head was white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like blazing fire. His feet were like bronze glowing in furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, and coming out of his mouth was a sharp, double-edged sword. His face, his face was like the sun shining in all its brilliance. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Also tonight... We are in the presence of God, in the glory of the Lord, and uh, we're going to be going through the Word of God together. But before we go through the Word of God, she called in the morning. As she called in the morning, she was so excited. She started by singing a song. She started by singing a song. And uh, she was having a testimony. As she was having a testimony, she was like, Pastor, I also want to testify today. During the service, give me a chance to give the glory unto the Lord. Yes, Mitlaketo, you can testify. Amen, Pastor. Thank you so much. Amen. Uh, good evening. Good evening, saints. Um, I have a testimony. We have been praying, praying for jobs. We have been hearing testimony, and this time around, I am the one with the testimony. Amen. Uh, I got a permanent job, so today they called me to say we are sending you the offer. The job is with um, ESCOM Project or Coordinator position in, in Tutuka. I'd really like to thank God because we have labored and we did not labor in vain. 
because God has answered. Like Pastor knows most of the things that were happening when, yeah, a lot happened, but God, God was working behind behind the scenes, and He remains faithful. So I'm really happy, and it has really encouraged me, and it has really strengthened my faith. I cannot thank also this group, Pastor. You know, like I remember at that time when I was sick and you said, come back to the prayer group. It was even difficult to pray for 15 minutes, but now we find ourselves praying for hours and hours, and it's all thanks to you, Pastor. So, yeah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. We are really celebrating Amen. with you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Wow. And Kato, she, she was testifying. Uh, this is another job, another job that she, she just went back to recently again. That means she's choosing between two jobs. She has got another one. Amen. She's going to be moving to another one. Amen. It has been, we really thank God. That's why on Saturday during the our special service for the jobs of our choice, conditions of our choice, and the place of our choice. We say that only thing that we can say is to say thank you, God, for what you have been doing in our life. Indeed, God, you have been wonderful. Indeed, God, you have been great. God, you have been good. If there is anything that we have to say unto God, is to say thank you, God, for what you have done in our life. You deserve all the honor. All the glory and Amen. all the praise and all the adoration. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, of course, I'm, today I was finishing my, my, my notice. On Monday, I'm starting my, a, a new job. I can't thank God enough. There was the two offers, both of them similar, close to engineering manager, but we select one. But tomorrow, there is another interview for the unit manager, for one of, of the mine. They want you to come, but I say, ah. I'm like, oh God, what do I do now? Must I not answer all the questions? How do I do this? Because what if tomorrow I answer and they put the offer again? I do, you see, I don't want, it has been raining jobs. Hallelujah. Amen. When we Amen. ask, he answers. Anyway, today I want to start this service in a different note. Yes, we have said that. Also, all those who have partners and who have partnering, also when you're listening to the word of God, every seed that you have sown in the ground is going to be watered. It's going to be watered. It's going to come back with their harvest. There is no offering that you have put in this ministry which you're not going to get a harvest of. You're going to get your harvest. As I'm still talking like that, I want to pray for a few people who have offered. Uh, I don't know whether this was a partnership. So that we can pray with you for God to bless you. Uh, can I pray with you, Paul Lazarus? Are you, yes, re Pastor. Are you ready for prayer? Yes, Pastor. Yes, you can stand up. I will start to eat. I want to pray for all those who have partnered so that where you have sacrificed and you have given unto the Lord, may the Lord bless you. Those who can, stretch your hands towards Bon Lazarus. I want to pray for Bon Lazarus. I want to pray for Bon Lazarus tonight. Are you ready, Bon Lazarus? Stretch your hands wherever you are to us. Well, Lazarus, I want to pray for him tonight. In the mighty name of the Lord, Jesus Christ, we soak the whole of him, his finances and everything into the blood of Jesus, into the fire of the Holy Spirit. As the Holy Ghost every case is be broken 
and we pray for blessings and prosperity in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just turn around three times. The power of God is falling on you there. And we say be blessed in Jesus' name. Be blessed. And I want you to listen. There's going to be a new season. This is going to be, there's going to be a new season. And all of it, all of us will experience it. Anyway. Uh, Cindy, where is Cindy? If Cindy is around, I want to pray for you. Makuru Tendo, I don't know whether you are also ready for prayer there. Makuru, oh, Cindy, she's here. Amen. 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 Okay, let us pray for Makuru Tendo, then we're going to pray for Cindy. Stretch your hands towards Makuru Tendo. Whoever you are, just stand up. Makuru Tendo, stretch your hands towards there. I want to pray for all of those seeds that you have been planting. In the mighty name of the Lord, Jesus Christ, we soak the whole of into the blood of Jesus, into the fire of the Holy Spirit, as the Holy Ghost. Every curse is to be broken, and we are praying for blessings. I said, be blessed. Just turn around three times, the power of God is falling on you there. Blessed. Hmm. Yes. Yes, Cindy, just stand up there. I want to pray for you. Amen. Stretch your hands wherever you are towards there. Believing for God to bless her tonight. As you are praying for Cindy, the Amen. Lord is also blessing you wherever you are. Let us stretch our hands to us. Amen. In the mighty name of the Lord. Jesus Christ. We soak the whole of sin into the blood of Jesus. Into the fire of the Holy Spirit. As the Holy Ghost. Every curse is to be broken. And we pray for blessings, for favor for success and prosperity. Just turn around three times, the power of God is falling on you there. It goes, we say you are blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. There's going to be a new season. We're, gonna, we're about to change the anointing very soon. We're going to change it. We're going to condition it. And you're going to begin to hear things here and there, all over the world. Mark my words. You know, when I was listening to the, to the word of God this afternoon, you know, it was, it was the word of God which was given last year around March. But whatever it was talking about has come to pass in our life. It was as if it was a prophetic word which came to pass which when you could look back and say, ah, what the, it was being said that day. Here it has happened. Here it has happened. We could see pro proof all over. Yet when we were speaking, God was speaking. We did not know what was going to happen tomorrow. God knew. And it was the word of God. And he fulfilled it. Yes, Mama Elizabeth. want to pray for... For your partnership. Yes. Stretch your hands wherever you are. Amen. It was in the mighty name of the Lord. Jesus Christ. I soak the whole of her into the blood of Jesus. The whole of her, everything into the blood of Jesus. Into the fire of the Holy Spirit. As the Holy Ghost. Fire. Every curse is to be broken. And we are praying for blessings. We are praying for favor and prosperity, Lord. Lord, for your glory. Just turn around three times. The power of God is falling on you there. Fire. 
Mm. So you're blessed. You know, when you're doing a prayer like this, you can feel that, I can feel that anointing touching, touching, touching and blessing. And it is because of that anointing. Anointing. It's a prayer by anointing. That's why it's not many words. It seems as if it's just words, but it's not words. There's something literal. I can feel it literally touching those. And even if you are here, it is touching you there. It is touching your house. It is touching wherever you are. And that anointing is a yoke breaker. That anointing is the blesser. It's a yoke breaker. Automatically, it just do so. Anyway, I'm just talking tonight. But anyway, let us share a bit the word of God tonight with the time that we have. Congratulations. And I say, everyone who is here, may God bless you. May God answer all of your prayer requests in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We were... We were in our 21 days prayer and fasting. Today is day number 22. To those who are continuing, let us continue to pray. Let us continue to fast. To those who say that they were on 21 days prayer and fasting, it's good. Stop in 21 days. But to those who are saying we're just continuing, let us continue. It won't be in vain. We are continuing to pray and we are continuing to fast. Anyway, let us go to the book of, um, before I forgot, uh, Helena, it was yesterday. She was like, Pastor, something happened again. Uh, There's another third job. They they just gave her an offer in Namibia. And she just said that, I I think, I don't know whether the third offer, she turned it down because you have got a better offer. That's what is happening to Helena in Namibia. Just that today, I don't see her in the platform. She was going to confirm what we are talking about. But anyway, let us go straight to the word of God. Revelation chapter 1, verse number 9. The Bible says that, I, John, your brother and companion in suffering and kingdom and patience, endure that are ours. Endurance that are ours in Jesus was on ice island of Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Okay, one thing that we, we, we did touch a bit the day before yesterday about that the book of Revelation, it was the book of Revelation which was written by John. And the Bible says that this John, he was one of the youngest disciples of Jesus Christ. By the time of Jesus Christ, when the Lord was here on the on earth, John, John was the youngest of them all. As John was the youngest of them all, you know, he is the only disciple of Jesus Christ who did not, who was not martyred, who was not killed for the sake of the gospel. The rest of the other ones were killed except Judas Iscariot were killed for the sake of the gospel. But John is the only one who lived and died a natural death. But that did not that did not exclude him for the suffering for the sake of the name of Jesus Christ. John says that I, John, your brother and companion in suffering and the kingdom and kingdom and patient endurance that are ours in Jesus. Like what you talked about a few days ago, that when John was uh, in, when he's talking about that I was in the island of Patmos, he was not in the island for holiday. He was not in the island of holiday, in the island of Patmos in holiday. He was not in the island of Patmos because things were going well. He was in the island of Patmos because he was arrested. He was in the in the he was in prison in the island of Patmos. As he was in prison in the island of Patmos, you know, the historian says that by this time, they've taken off the eyes of John. He was no longer seen with these natural eyes. Whatever he says that I saw, it was by revelation. 
it was not because of his ordinary eyes it was because of supernatural vision seen by the enablement of the holy spirit you know sometimes you know you can say that it's when we get out of natural then we are able to enter supernatural sometimes some of this revelation that john you know is able to see is because he does not have eyes because most of the time, when we still have God, our own five senses, we tend to rely the most on our own five senses. But when the five senses are gone, you don't have a choice, but you have to see in the spirit. You have got only one sight which is left. Maybe that was also what caused John to be able to see more the things that were in heaven. The things that were in heaven, more than the things which were here. If John were using his two eyes, he could have seen, relied on what he see. Remember what the Bible says that in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 7. The Bible says that we walk with God. We don't walk with God with sight. We walk with God by faith. Then when sight has been taken off, sight of natural, he was forced to live by faith. He was forced to depend on the Holy Ghost. He was forced to depend on the supernatural. Then yet John began to see things which were out of this world. He began to see Jesus Christ in the heaven. I want to tell you that this revelation, the book of Revelation, is so wonderful because John is not visiting heaven once. John is it's like he was now living in the supernatural. He was living now in the supernatural. He was now, it was as if he was living in heaven, even though he when he was here on earth. When the the place where the super the, the natural end, the supernatural begin. The place where the natural end, the supernatural begin. What are we talking about? You know, when you talk about where the, the place where the natural end, the supernatural begin, it's the same thing when you hear about Papa Abraham. The Bible says that they were very old. As they were very old, the Bible said they have passed the time of childbearing. Abraham is old. Sarah is old. It is impossible natural for them to conceive a child. As it was natural for them to conceive a child, the only one if they had to conceive it is by miracle. It's where the supernatural begin. It's where the supernatural begin, and that's where uh, and Isaac was born because it was only where God intervention is left. That's why we are talking about Apostle John. Apostle John, by this time, he had to rely upon God solely. There was nothing more that can distract this man. There was only one thing uh, in order for him to focus in the kingdom business and in the supernatural business. Sometimes, you know, naturally you can think that it is a prison in Patmos. But God... God had something which was divine, which was beyond the natural that he wanted to reveal, that he wanted to reveal to John, for John to apprehend, and he did not. He wanted solely John's attention. That's why he wanted to confine John to one place. When he confined John to one place, he made sure that he can get all the attention from God. And that's why when you hear that this book is not even the ordinary name, the last book which you are talking about is the book of Revelation, where it starts by revelation and it ends by revelation. It talks the things that are beyond human's mind, human's intellect, Amen. human's wisdom, where it is divine knowledge which no man can comprehend, no professor can comprehend, no ordinary person can comprehend, because this are the things beyond human's knowledge. It's the things that John is, is transcending 
to heaven. As he's transcending to heaven, he sees things that are beyond human comprehension. When I'm talking about maybe that uh, the confinement of John in the island and the prison of Patmos, it was God's plan, I remember about Apostle Paul. The Bible talks about the man Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul, the Bible said that even the day that he was called, the Lord said that I want Apostle Paul, I want him to suffer for my name. I want him to suffer for my name. And sooner or later, Apostle Paul was arrested and he moved from one prison to another. But what seems to be a prison to Apostle Paul, it will work for his divine assignment. What do we talk about? You know, when Apostle Paul was in prison, he was forced to write letters. Sometimes he will write letter to Corinth. Sometimes he will write letter to Ephesus. Sometimes he will write letter to Galatia. Sometimes he will write letter to different portion part of the world where he have went to preach the gospel. What seemed to be prison? Because if Apostle Paul was out of prison, most of these places he would have just gone and he would not have write. But the problem was... Today we were not going to be having the book of Ephesus. We're not going to have the book of Galatia. We're not going to have the book of Corinth. We're not going to have the book of Romans. But the reason why Apostle Paul, he had written so many books, it was because of the confinement, him being in prison. Him being prison gave the only way of communication to communicate. The only way where he was going to communicate was to writing letters, which are the books of the Bible today. Amen. Which is the book of the Bible today, which today, even though Apostle Paul, when he saw the purpose of God, why he was suffering and going through what he was going through, he ended up saying that all things work together for good to them that love God. All things work together for good to them that love God, to them who have been called according to his purpose. Romans chapter 8, verse number 28. Child of God, if you are a child of God, walking in the will of God, living in the presence of God, doing what you ought to do, no matter what happens you are in your life, no matter what comes your way, all things work together for good. It is you can never go wrong if you live in the presence of God. If you live in the power of God, you can never go wrong. It will be as if whatever the devil have meant for your bed, whatever the devil have meant to distract and to destroy you, to confine you, God will use it for your good. And at the end of the day, you will be able to look back and you say, thank God for prison. Thank God for this. I can tell you when they are taking John's eyes, it was painful. When they were arresting John and putting him into prison. It was painful, but God had a purpose. God see that it is the time that I too, even though the devil thinks that is taking the eyes of John, but God said that I'm preparing John to see what no man has seen, to show John the things that are beyond the natural. But this thing that John has to see does not need his ordinary eyes. The things that John that needs to see, he needs a supernatural eyes. He needs to learn. He need, God was like, I need to train John to see not by his eyes, but to see by faith. To see by faith. And indeed, John, John was seeing the things by faith. John end up living in the spirit and they can tell you how Jesus look like. I'm not talking about Jesus that people know. I'm not talking about the photos on the people's walls. I'm not talking about Jesus who people know. The one on the cross. That's not how John described Jesus. 
That's not how he saw Jesus in a current. That is Jesus. The, Jesus on the photos that you see, Jesus on the cross that you see, that is the back then revelation when the Lord appeared when he was in this world. But after when John, Jesus Christ died, and resurrected, carried by the cloud, and he went to heaven, and how he looked now, he does not look like that. John says that I've seen Jesus. I've seen Jesus. He doesn't look like that. When he is describing Jesus, he said that this is in verse number, when you read verse number, um, verse number 10, I want you to get this. Of Revelation chapter 1, John said that on the day, on the Lord's day, I was in spirit. This man, John, he's not just saying I was in spirit. He lived in the spirit in this particular time. He lived in faith. He lived in spirit. So I had behind me a loud voice like a trumpet. The Bible says that the sound, hey, the voice of Jesus. John said that it sounds like a trumpet. Ah, uh-huh. that's what John said. John said that he hear, he could even hear Jesus. He sound, his voice sound like a trumpet. Okay, let's go on. And the Bible say that we said on the scroll. Okay, verse number eleven. But let's read verse number twelve. I turned around and see the voice that was speaking to me. And when I saw seven seven golden lampstands. Among the seven lampstand was someone like the son of man. So there was someone like Jesus. That's what he's talking about. Listen to this one. Dressed in the robe, reaching down his feet with a golden surge in his chest. He said that his hair, the hair on his head was white as wool. I have never seen a photo of Jesus with a white with a white hair like that. But John said that the Lord today he does not have a black hair, he does not have a brown hair, he have got a white hair. That's what John said. He saw Jesus in heaven. And he said that white as snow, his eyes was like a blazing fire. Jesus is not that kind of Jesus carrying the crown on the cross. Jesus is not that Jesus where they show you. I'm talking about today the lion of the tribe of Judah. Do you know even when you are hearing about the lion of the tribe of Judah, you will hear as we go through the book of Revelation. That's what John described Jesus, that this is the one. Even his eyes, he said that his eyes have got, they've got fire. We're like blazing fire. This is Jesus in glory. (laughs) I want want you to understand this. This is Jesus, um, you know, this is not not Jesus um, who has been, um, his, whose glory has been reduced for us to be able to apprehend Jesus in glory. When John go down there, you will hear that John says that I, when I tried to look at the Son of Man, I fell down as though I was dead. He said that he could not look at the Son of God like that. He was too much glorious. He even John, who had spent years with Jesus, there about three years, but when he see him in glory, he even fell down. That's how the Lord is glorious today. And he says that his feet were like bronze, glowing in a finest. His his voice was like a sound of a rushing water. I want you to go, verse number 17, which we're going to read maybe a few days to come. He says that, when I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. And he placed his hand on the right hand, on me, and said, do not be afraid, I'm the first and the last. I'm trying to tell you that John seeing things in heaven. John seeing things in heaven when he was in Patmos. Patmos were just where the body was, but John was out of the body. John was in heaven. This was not things that he was seeing in Patmos. These were the things that John was seeing in heaven. John was 
it is possible to be out of a body. It's the same thing when you hear that somebody has passed on. Because, you know, when we say that, you hear that today you are alive, what is happening is just that your spirit is just in your body. But the day that you check out of this body, the body and the spirit separate and the body that, not the spirit. The spirit goes and goes to heaven. The spirit goes to what is in heaven. Then it is possible to, to get out of the body. It is possible to go to heaven. Yes, I'm saying that. John was not in Patmos. The body was in Patmos, but John was no longer there in Patmos. John was in heaven. Patmos was just where the body was, but he was out of the body already. Seeing things in heaven, seeing things even ten thousand years to come. He will, uh, you will hear if you go through the book of Revelation, you will hear that this is not the thing that an ordinary person has written. It is out of this world. But God was preparing him in order to write a final book, which is called the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible, to conclude. That's why, even though the devil thinks he's taking out his eyes, even though the devil thinks that he's confining him, the devil is just a fool. He doesn't understand that there was a bigger plan. There was a bigger purpose. That's why, as a child of God, don't worry, don't cry. No matter what happened around you, as long as you are the child of God, as long as you are living in the presence of God, doing what God says that you you must do know that at the end of the day all things work together to them that love God to them that have been called according to his purpose at the end of the day you will glorify the name of the Lord at the end of the day you will see the glory of the Lord I could tell when John John finally came out of his body and finally went to heaven he was now saying, God, thank you for the prison. Thank you for you to take my eye, to take his eyes, so that he can fulfill that which he was born to fulfill. Child of God, one of the things, the greatest things that we are living for in this world is not to be successful into the standard of this world. Not that you're not going to be successful, you're going to be but to be successful in the standard of heaven. When you do that thing that God has sent us here on earth to fulfill, because each and every one of us, you were not born by mistake. You are not alive by mistake. God has got a greater purpose for you. And the greatest day and achievement of your life is when you, we have fulfilled what God has sent us to fulfill in this world. And that must be our goal. I don't know whether I'm talking to somebody tonight. I don't know whether I'm still connected. It seems as if I'm not connected. I'm not sure. Because it's so quiet here. We are. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Anyway, because Amen. of time. I want us to begin to pray. I want us to prepare to go and pray. As we are preparing to pray, saying, Oh God, I thank you for what you have done. I thank you for what you are doing in my life. But, oh Lord, one thing that I ask is that we may fulfill that we want us to fulfill in our life. Help us to see, to see in the spirit, to see the way you see things, to perceive the way you want us to perceive. Uh, help us, mighty Holy Spirit, that we may fulfill that you want us to fulfill. Wherever you are, begin to pray, begin to pray. Ara kianto frasandia sopra dia se anda la bazondo robo o robo si anda la bazondo robo si anda la bayade ara bayando robo i ande le bazondo robo si anda la bayade ara basoto robo si anda la bayade father we surrender to you Lord. We say, Lord, fulfill, fulfill our destiny. Help us to fulfill our destiny and make our life to be all about you, Savior. 
Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy I command them to the abyss. I command them to the abyss. Say anything which is not of God. Anything which is not of God. In my life. In my life. In my In my family. In my family, in my in my career, in my career, in our countries, in, our country, in, our country, in every sector of my life, in every sector of my life, catch fire now, catch fire now, catch fire now. Catch fire now. Catch fire now. Catch fire now. I command them. I command them. Come out. 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 Say I command. Everything to turn around for my good. Everything to turn around for my good. Say everything. Everything. Turn around. Turn around. Turn around. For my good. So let there be progress. Let there be progress. Let there be progress. In every sector of my life. In every sector of my life. So let there be miracle jobs. Let there be miracle jobs. Miracle jobs. Miracle jobs. Miracle businesses. Miracle businesses. In the name of Jesus Christ. Say, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. You are my Lord. You are my Lord. You are my Savior. You are my Savior. Wash me with your blood. Wash me with your blood. Forgive me my sins. Forgive me my sins. Bless me today. Bless me today. Protect me from today. Protect me from today. From today. From today. From today. I am born again. I am, I am saved. I am saved. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I feel the anointing of God touching wherever you are. It's just touching. It's a wonderful anointing. 
It's a wonderful anointing Amen. wherever you are. It's sanitizing your house. It's blessing Amen. you. It's blessing us. It's blessing us. Amen. Do, do you know this as we are wrapping up? You know, when you talk about prayer by anointing, it's just a small touch of that anointing. Just one. It's not too much that you need. Just one. And it changes everything. Just one. Just small. And I can feel it touching you. I can feel it touching us. I can feel it touching our things. Anyway, the future is very bright in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The future is very bright. You know, you know. on our Saturday services, we are going to change a bit. Uh, of course, already when you have got a job of your choice, conditions of our choice, salaries of our choice, what more to ask? Very soon we are going to be asking God to open opportunities to raise uh, to raise uh, eh, b- b- billionaires, you know. And the Bible said that with God all things are... All these things you just have to believe. And the rest is not going to be by your effort. It will be based on what God can do. And the Bible said that is there anything to hard for God? Absolutely not. Hallelujah. Amen. Anyway. Amen. Anyway. Let us share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. The love of God. The love of God. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us all. Be with us all. Be with us all. Surely goodness and love. Surely goodness and love. Surely goodness and love. Shall follow me. Surely goodness and love. All the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And I want to say to us tonight, may God bless you. Have a blessed and a wonderful night in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.